Hi, and welcome to my OCR AA Level Biology Revision session with me, Christine. So today's lesson, I want to look at apical dominance and stem elongation, which is part of your plant response module. So let's just have a look at our plants then. So we have been introduced to dicotyledonous plants, and the key thing we need to understand for this module is that dicotyledonous plants have what's known as apical meristems. Now, apical meristems are undifferentiated cells. That therefore means that they have the capacity to go through mitotic division and differentiate. So this brings us to module two, our cell division topic area. Now, what we need to understand is these apical meristems are actually found at the tip of the roots and at the tip of the shoots in our dicotyledonous plants. Now, plant hormones are used to control growth, just like inside animals, we don't want mitosis to occur uncontrolled. We also have that our hormones are in the plant are going to control the growth of the plant. You don't want the plant to get too big too quickly because then if it hasn't managed to build enough strength within its structure, then the pull of gravity will affect it to just fall down flat on the ground. So it is a very fine balancing act between the growth that's needed and the controlling it to account for all the other environmental factors. If a plant grows too tall too quickly, the wind could come along and just blow it down. That's not efficient. So a plant actually responds to its environment, producing hormones to control that growth. Now, the main hormone that you're going to look at is auxin. Now, auxin is a growth promoter. It will control cell elongation. It maintains what's called apical dominance, and we'll look at that in a bit more detail. And also, it controls tropisms. So do please check out my video on tropisms. So let's just look at what auxin actually does then. So auxin is a hormone that is released by these apical meristem cells at the tip of the shoot and the tip of the root. And as the auxin diffuses to cells just below where it's being produced, what will happen is it will cause transport of hydrogen ions. Now this transport of hydrogen ions goes from the cytoplasm into the cell wall. Now what that does is that's going to affect the pH. Now by changing the pH inside the cell wall, what that does is that activates enzymes called expansins. Now take us back to module two, biological molecules. We need to remember that we have cellulose molecules which are building up our cell wall. The cellulose Fibres are creating those cross links because they have the inversion of their glucose molecules, their beta glucose molecules. So what the enzyme expansion does is it actually breaks these cross links between the cellulose fibres. Now what that does is that makes the cell wall more flexible. So because the cell wall is now flexible, what that then means is that the cell can expand and we call that expansion elongation. The cell is going to elongate as water is being absorbed. The water is being absorbed, that's going to move into and create this permanent large vacuum. As the auxin starts to decrease, that then makes the expansins actually not active. And what you then end up getting is you then end up getting that the cell wall actually will become rigid again. So as the pH starts to rise because the auxin levels have decreased, that's changing the enzymes shape. So this is going back to our enzyme module. If we are changing the pH away from its optimum, the expansions are going to change their tertiary structure, they won't be able to break those cross bridges anymore. So the cell will grow up to a point where it will no longer take in any more of the water because the cell wall is now rigid again. 
Not only does the auxin do that with regards to the cell wall, but it also alters gene expression inside and that promotes the cell's growth. So we understand that the auxin has got a really big role to play in this stimulating of the cell growth. So what is apical dominance then? Well, apical dominance is where if we have high auxin concentrations, they are going to stimulate the growth at what's known as the apical shoot. They are then going to inhibit the growth at these lateral shoots. Well, why? What's the purpose? Why would a plant do this? Well, the plants grow taller by having this apical dominance and it means they are more efficient at competing for sunlight, but it's a very controlled process. And what they love to do in the exam is they love to give you, for example, a graph with some bits of data. So if they give you a graph like this, what they want you to note is the key in the fact that they've shown that the lateral shoot growth is with an X and the apical shoot growth is with a triangle. So there's a key to show us which one is which. And I always tell my students, highlight any relevant information to make it more visible. So that's the first thing I would do. And what we can see with this graph is when we have high auxin concentrations, then the apical shoot is stimulated to grow. And you can see quite clearly up until the point of 10 to the minus five moles per decimeter cubed, is there a increase in that stimulation of growth? If we look further down what we can see between 10 to the minus nine and 10 to the minus six, what you can quite clearly see is there is a decrease in the lateral shoots. Now they love to give a describe and explain question when they give you a graph. So what they want you to do is describe what you see and always give data. Give the data of where is there an increase, where does it plateau, where is there a decrease. And what you should also note is the fact that on my y-axis, the stimulation of growth is above the zero, the inhibition of growth is below. So we can quite clearly see that after 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 6 auxin concentration, that's when we see the inhibition of the growth of the lateral shoots. So it is very much about the concentration of auxin and how that has an effect. Well, the next thing they could do in a question like this is say to you, well, how did these auxin concentrations get made? Well, therefore, they may be asking you to describe how you would do a serial dilution. So it's important that you note whenever you are given this information in a question, they could be assessing you on not only the subject content, but also your practical skills. So... We know that auxin is the growth stimulation hormone for cell elongation. And now I want to bring in gibberellins. So gibberellins are another hormone which is produced by the plant. Gibberellins actually cause stem elongation. So what the gibberellins do is they affect the length of what's known as the internodes. Now the internode is basically the region between the leaves of a stem and the stem. So what we've got is these internodes that are being affected by gibberellin concentration. Now, they were discovered that they were actually produced by a fungus. And that's why it's from the name, the gibberellin is from the name of the fungus, the genus, the generic name, gibberella. So they discovered that these hormones were produced by this fungus but what they then discovered is actually they also affect were made by the plants so these hormones are hormones that are made not only by fungus but also by plants when they took the hormone from the fungus and they infected rice seedlings with it the rice seedlings actually grew extremely tall and thin and that became a problem because if they grow too tall and thin, as I said, that pill of gravity, that will have an effect on the plant being able to compete for that sunlight. So they didn't want the rice seedlings to grow 
too tall and too thin. So what they did is they looked at, well, what happens if we remove the ability of the plant to produce the gibberellin? So if they were able to remove the gibberellin, what happens then? And that's where you end up with dwarf plants. So dwarf plants actually produce little or no gibberellin, and that is what gives them that height of the plant. Now that could be because actually these plants are not strong enough to withstand the wind, the exposure to the environmental conditions. So therefore plants are adapted and will produce the hormones necessary for the growth for what is going to ensure that they are able to survive. So they're not wasting any parts of their energy by producing more cells or elongating their cells and also making them less vulnerable to that damage, not only from the weather conditions, but also with harvesting. And that's why when plants are harvested in farmlands, thinking to your biodiversity, why you would find other species of plants growing much lower down because they have a difference in what they can withstand. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. Also do check out my revision platform www.aiqchat.com.